Travis Wayne Goodsell. Uh, I'm behind today uh, because uh, Amanda is the only person who's desiring to research the last days about the Mormon Moses as Joseph Smith referred to him as and uh, and so I got caught up uh, responding to her uh, comments uh, from last night and uh, <clears throat> I thought uh, I'd share with you my reply to uh, the one concerning the birth date uh, of the Mormon Moses. Uh, because it is known, you can find it out, you have to do the research. <coughs> and so as a result, uh, that prevented me from doing the video that I woke up this morning late <laughs> to want to do uh, which is another revision uh, a rewording a redesign of the LDS last days exodus uh, so uh, I hope I can get to it sometime I have uh, laundry to do this morning and, and some other things that are needing my attention and so uh, reading this is, might be all I'll get to today we'll see and hopefully I can get to the LDS last days exodus some other time but this information does have have bearing on the last day's exodus because it's the Mormon Moses and I use that term because Moses is the one who was a part of the original exodus from which we get the last day's Moses uh, so let's bring up the uh, scripture on that first for you if you're not understanding what I'm referring to, and I need Doctrine and Covenants, not Book of Mormon. Section 103, and it technically starts in 14, as it warns Mormons not to pollute their inheritance, otherwise they're going to be thrown down. And so he then goes on to 15 and says the redemption of Zion must needs come by power. <clears throat> so Joseph Smith failed to establish Zion and it needs to be redeemed restored and so in 16 Joseph Smith as Mormons all believe he's receiving revelation therefore I will raise up unto my people Mormons a man who shall lead them like as Moses led the children of Israel if you don't understand the learning of the Jews because the Book of Mormon tells us right in the beginning that our religion is after the learning of the Jews not the learning of the Christians the learning of the Jews not the modern Jews even though modern Jews are a merge of the pre-captivity Jews and the post-captivity Babylonian Semitic Jews <clears throat> that's where you need to recognize the difference and weed out all the Semitic Babylonian influences into the current Jewish uh, religion as their calendar system language holy days etc. are all based on Semitic Babylonian they got assimilated and so uh, as this man who is Mormon is mortal he has to have a birth date and there are plenty of scriptures that talk about the Christ having a birth date and Christmas is a well-known one 
uh, which is not correct. <laughs> and if you're wondering, well, the Christ, there's only one Christ, Travis. You have to know the definition of Christ. It's a Greek word. It means anointed. Who is anointed? Kings are anointed. The Jews, in Hebrew, call it Messiah, which is a an English uh, corruption of the phonetics from the Hebrew. And so, uh, for the Jews, the learning of the Jews, everybody who becomes a king is a Christ. So, their Messiah, according to the learning of the Jews, is supposed to be descended from King David in order to restore the kingdom of David. And here you have Joseph Smith saying, Zion needs to be redeemed. Kingdom of David is what he's referring to. <clears throat> and I can go on and on on that. But we're trying to cover the birth date within 15 minutes from now, which we're over six minutes. And so, uh, as Mormons go to the temple, they become Christ's during their initiatories. Washings and anointings. Bingo! It's just that the church wants to distract away from that. They don't want to call you Christ. They'll call you saviors on Mount Zion, <laughs> but only for doing your own genealogy work on your family. <laughs> uh, and so, let me read to you uh, the response. There are numerous symbols of Horus's birthday. Uh, Horus is uh, Moses, the Mormon Messiah, the Christ. <clears throat> the sunrise each and every morning is such a symbol. Scholars needed to look to the Egyptians for the literal date of Horus, his birth date, uh, rather than assuming due to comparison with later developed religions. However, the Catholics were the ones who got the actual birth date correct with their St. Patrick, whose death date is the birth date for the Mormon Moses Horus, as St. Patrick mythically chased out the snakes from Ireland centuries after they were actually chased out, giving us the big clue. It is also signific a significant date for Mormons, as it was the date when Joseph Smith gave women the priesthood in 1842. And if you're going, what's the date? What's the date? <laughs> 17th of March. St. Patty's Day. And then Mormon women should all know about the date in regards to giving women the priesthood in 1842. And, and this is what nobody knows, when Brigham excommunicated not the High Council Twelve, nor Joseph Smith, Thomas B. Marsh in 1839 exalting Brigham as the president of the Missionary Twelve. The sign of the birth of the Son of Man, 23rd September 2017, was the Saturday when the Relief Society was finally what was finally included? Oh, yeah. Was finally included in General Conference. With the brand new Relief Society president appointed in April Conference who had been the primary president Thus, the president of children became the president of mothers, from virgin to woman, symbolically. The date was also the ancient Egyptian religious calendar date for the Feast of Horus the High Priest. That was pretty cool. I wasn't expecting that. I just saw the books online, bought them, and lo and behold, Holy crap! <laughs> it's New Year for the first of the solar eclipse. Oh, yeah, I covered it here. 
Uh, 17 March 1970 <gasps> was either the 9th or 10th of Adar, depending on modern or ancient calendar used. Adar is Semitic Hebrew. <clears throat> ancient would be the 10th, which is the Yod, the Hebrew alphabetical letter, for Yah, the Hebrew God. Hmm. Purim being five days after, as the Babylonian Ishtar imagery is very obvious. It is the sixth civil calendar month and the twelfth religious calendar month. The sign of the first day of three days of darkness, 21st of August 2017, occurred on the ancient Egyptian religious new year, meaning the ancient Egyptians knew the coming date from which Joel, Matthew, and John got it from. Sun shall be darkened. Uh, the author of the Torah I should have also included here, because uh, there was three days of darkness with the last days or the Exodus uh, prior to the Exodus, actually, and knew the location of the events being in America, because the solar eclipse only occurred over America. All three only occur over America. They knew this. That blows my mind. Yeah, it literally blows my mind. I still... It, that means they knew the geography of the Earth. They knew astronomy for all locations around the Earth. <laughs> Do you understand how that blows my mind? The year is 1970 because this is the 50th year being the Jubilee year which is a Jewish thing when Moses' law freed slaves and prisoners. Exodus. Also a last day's prophecy. Slaves and prisoners shall be set free. Ezra Taft Benson even has me curious if he knew of this date when he gave his infamous to the youth of the noble birthright talk to the Aaronic priesthood during his solemn assembly general conference in April 1986. And I noticed the church today when I went to uh, get the upcoming quotes they've changed their formatting again. <laughs> oh, they're really making a mess. All right, uh, the year, uh, so April 8, 1986, the year the Mormon Moses would have just become an Aaronic priest. Remember, March 17th, April, <clears throat> an Aaronic high priest to baptize like John the Baptist and bless the sacrament of the Last Supper. And Mormons might think that's strange because we only have one sacrament in Mormonism. <laughs> but uh, Catholics and Christians, well, it's mostly Catholics. Uh, no, uh, 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 uh. When talking to others, you need to specify which sacrament. Let's just put it that way. Uh, but the Last Supper also is symbolic of the Mormon Moses Horus coming. Uh, because uh, what happens with the Last Supper? You remember the death of the king. And all Christians think, oh, well, Jesus. <laughs> no. <laughs> Who's the father of Horus? Why is Horus going back to Egypt when he becomes a man to challenge Set, his uncle, for the throne. <laughs> it's because Osiris was the king who was murdered. And it's Osiris whose body 
blood spilled, murder, and body broken, as Set, the second time, had to dismember the body into 14 pieces. Oh, but it's the 12 tribes of Israel, Travis. <laughs> no, it's the 13 tribes of Israel. Joseph gets a double portion. So Ephraim and Manasseh become added tribes to the original 12. But you said 14, Travis. <laughs> yes, as Isis, the wife of Osiris, sent out missionaries to gather the elect, I mean the body of Osiris, back to Egypt, to church, to assemble, to partake of the broken body and the blood of Osiris in remembrance of the gathering of the last days, which Moses had the keys of the gathering. Assembling at church to partake of the sacrament of the Last Supper, <clears throat> which comes from the temple ritual of the Egyptians. You'd gather at the temple and give your offerings, and the priest would present them and have them blessed before the idol god of the Holy of Holies, and then give a portion back to the offerer as a Last Supper remembrance of Osiris's dead body. And Horus, who is to come out of the gathered elect. Because Isis, after gathering the body of Osiris, had to form one of the 14 pieces that was missing. Which of the two sexes, male and female, are missing what men have? And who is that 14th child of Yahab, the usurper? Yeah, Dinah, who was raped by the, the Shechemite, the Shek people, was it Shechem? Is that the right people? Uh, she was raped by those guys, and then uh, Simeon got some other brothers to uh, deceive the people uh, who raped Dinah and, uh, and said, oh yeah, if you want to be united with us, you have to be circumcised. Cutting off. So yes, that's all part of the symbolism as well. And so Isis then formed a new one and impregnated herself with Horus. And then in the battle, Horus then wins by showing that he's a descendant of Set, the evil government and the evil church, the great and abominable church. So he comes out of the government of the land of America and the land of the great and abominable church in America. Joseph Smith is saying his church will be usurped with his murder. And from this great and abominable church that takes over after murdering Joseph Smith will come the Mormon Mo Moses. Ugh, i got to do my laundry. I'm not finished. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, I'm at 1970. Alright, now I have 30 minutes. <laughs> See, trying to do the last day's exodus, uh, that would have been a real struggle. So, 1970 would have been the middle year of Aaronic Priesthood in attendance. In that talk, he called pregnancy as an ugly sin and a pernicious evil. He's quoting, Benson is quoting Spencer W. Kimball in Miracle of Forgiveness. And Spencer W. Kimball is quoting Boyd K. Packer. Both Moses and Herod are told 
that they tried to murder babies. Here we have Benson as the religious fulfillment as Trump with his family separation southern border policy with babies locked in cages away from their mothers being the government equivalent. In fact, Miracle of Forgiveness by Spencer W. Kimball, from which Benson quoted, was published in 1969, during the conception of the Mormon Moses Horus. So, yeah, two minutes would have put me over, but uh, uh, that is the birth date of uh, the modern Moses, Mormon, Horus, man-child, one mighty and strong. He has many different names. Hercules, Perseus, Jesus Christ, <laughs> Emmanuel, which is son Amen, whom Joseph Smith calls him Sun God, which would have to do with the name of the Mormon Moses. So all prophecies are given to us. We just have to search to find them. And as I've given you clues, yes, Hercules, Perseus, and then there's Elijah and Lilith. There's the book of Jasher with baby Moses. You know, we're sort of withheld in the Gospels narratives about baby Jesus. You know, like Baby Yoda. We get Baby Yoda now. Which reminds me, I need to go watch that right now. <laughs> so I'll be watching it as you finally see this video up on the screen. <clears throat> so yes, there's his birth date. There's his childhood. There's his teen years. There's his uh, adult years. Uh, and his missionary service as this Mormon Moses is also the forerunner who is Elijah uh, for Moses as the Kirtland Temple had Elijah and Moses appearing on the 3rd of April which was Passover if you go to timeanddate.com which is what I had to tell Amanda uh, and she wanted a confirmation reference that uh, that same uh, temple experience that Joseph records uh, was actually Passover. Time and date, awesome. Uh, and uh, you have to combine it with my Stellarium program, stellarium.org, as well as uh, knowing when solar and lunar eclipses occur. And conjunctions. Uh, but Stellarium helps with conjunctions. Thus the sign of the Son of Man, for one example. And uh, so, yes, it is prophesied for his birthday, his actual birthday. All these other birthdays are symbolic, you know, sun rising, symbolic. Uh, the uh, Sirius, whom I've been watching in the skies, as it passed the southern border, which is the finish line, he won. Now we're waiting for him to set as uh, Venus is a no-show now as it keeps falling <laughs> as we've had the falling stars since Nelson's birthday and uh, yeah we're, we're waiting all of it is happening all of it is being fulfilled and we're just waiting now for the exodus which comes during a time of major destruction as uh, Trump is setting it up as I've been paying attention to the news. So you can be a lover of Trump all you want, but you're on the wrong side of history. You're anti-prophecy. You're anti-religion. Oops. So, yeah, very disappointing to see Mormons voting for Trump in both elections. Which, the date for the 2016 election was given as prophesied. So yeah, his name, it's in scripture, you can know his name, Emmanuel. And so Matthew, what does he call his, 
Christ. Jesus! He quotes the passage, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Therefore, you shall call his name Jesus. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what are you doing? It was a gimme. <laughs> Supposed to be the book of Emmanuel. The Gospels of Emmanuel. Uh, how did they mess that up? Matthew. <laughs> I mean, at least Luke made it correct by saying he's the son of the highest. Highest what, Luke? <laughs> or translator of Luke. It's the highest sun, as in sun in the sky. Thus the sun god, sun Amun, as Joseph Smith called him, which is the Egyptian god. <sighs> All right, let's restore. Let's restore <laughs> my word program here. Because I did a copy and paste of it. Uh, yeah, there we go. Okay.